Hey guys, this is John from Vapor Hunting Technologies. I'm here with Ryan. Um, today, a customer sent us a intake manifold and we're gonna do like a two part series. Uh, first, we're going to take this top part and we're gonna use a glass bead and aluminum oxide mixture in the VH800 base. So again, this was sent in by a customer. This was through our free application testing program. So if you guys have something laying around that you wanna see how it looks vapor blasted, make sure to send that in. Um, I'll put a link below. This is off of a Honda, I believe. This thing is seriously beefy too. It does. It's got some cool machining marks in here. I'm sure this is aftermarket. Yeah. This and thing looks pretty great. And you can definitely tell there's some like, like again, it looks pretty dull, but you know, there's some paint right here and there's some light corrosion, but I, again, when we put it in the machine, with oh, the with the mixture of glass bead and aluminum, aluminum oxide, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a polish finish, but it's not gonna be as like shiny, so it'll definitely do the job. And we're gonna do this video in two sections. So again, like John's saying, we're gonna start with that aluminum oxide glass bead mixture. Then we're gonna do this larger portion in glass bead um, to kind of reference what we expect that to look like. With the aluminum oxide glass bead mixture, it's going to be a little bit darker. That's because. Um, the aluminum oxide is angular, so it's gonna cut into your metal more, meaning it's not gonna be as smooth, but your glass bead being a spherical abrasive is gonna roll this surface and polish it up. So it'll give you a good comparison of something that came from the exact same environment. That way you guys can see how it's gonna actually affect your parts depending on which media you choose to blast with. Yep. So let's get started. Let's do it. So right next to us is the VH800 base. Um, it's basically one of our like, will you say it's a, it's not, it's a not hobbyist, but is it kind of a? It's a good middle ground because yeah. I would consider our VH800, uh, sort of the, or no, excuse me, the VH800 FL, which is that machine right there, kind of the first step into the industrial. This was probably like a light industrial, which is actually what the 800 FL probably is, mm -hmm. but it's a really good offering because um, it's got the automatic overflow. That way, if you have multiple people using the machine, you don't have to keep a mental note of when to drain it. It does it all for you. So it's definitely more, actually, that was kind of uh, yeah. on the cue there. Yep, because so. it has the uh, autom automated uh, overflow valve. So you don't really have to worry about like keeping the, you know, because uh, in the Weekend Warrior, you have right. the manual. So every time you have to sort of wait for like, what, 150 seconds don't to then turn, turn it on. Right, yeah. yeah because you gotta wait for the abrasive to settle and then you have excess water. Which if you're in a shop setting where you're the only one using the machine, it's easy to keep a mental note of. Yeah. You just set a timer or you kind of know, okay, I've waited for five minutes, I can definitely drain my machine. Yeah. But whenever you're in an industrial setting or a shop setting where you have multiple people using it, it's really nice to have that way. That way someone doesn't leave it open and you forget it and drain all your media out of your mm -hmm. machine. Yeah. Um, before we get started real quick, I do want to no uh, note John here, Mr. Eagle Eye, actually found this piece of metal on the floor of the machine. Now, if you guys have a vapor honing machine, you know that this right here can be very detrimental to the pump. This is definitely something that can fall through the floor. And of course, if it gets sucked up into your pump that sits in the hopper down there, it can burn it up. This will actually prevent the pump from spinning, and especially if it was larger. But this right here can do a lot of damage to your machine. So keeping note or making sure to take all small pieces out of your parts before you put it in your machine is, is a must. So I'm gonna put this part inside. Uh, like we said before, this is a, uh, a mixture of glass bead and aluminum oxide. So the, the aluminum oxide will basically strip off any corrosion, any paint, but leaving, and this is where the glass bead comes in, it'll leave a nice polish finish. So gonna go right ahead and start blasting it. And kind of while he's doing this, to explain the reason that you would want to mix abrasives is it's actually for faster processing. So if you're using the aluminum oxide, it's gonna make stripping a lot easier, like he's saying, but you can polish at the same time. Whereas previously, you would have to use two separate abrasives and two separate machines. So this is just a lot faster. So there's your, like a before, and then you got after. Oh, so party. It is party. Yeah. And we've good. probably been blasting for what? A minute, maybe? Oh, yeah. Cool. All right, I'm done. Bad guys. Let's take a gander. 
What'd you think? It actually turned out really nice. It does, yeah. That's incredible. Well, I'm gonna drive this off. But bam, bad guys. That looks incredible. That I'm does not, look really good. Not gonna lie. I, you know, we can't. We Ryan and I can't stress enough the the results and the value you can get with the process and our machines. Because I know we have a lot of guys that want to restore their motorcycles. You know, we had the Honda 250R. Right. Um, taking something like this and bringing it back to its pristine, it's sort of it's sort of um, kind of going back in time, you know, to its sort of original look. And it's kind of hard to understand how much better something like this can look. Because to be honest with you, this doesn't look that bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, it's yeah. it's not it's not very tarnished in, in our world. But mm. then when you see it like this, yeah. it's kind of mind blowing how much this process can bring back. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is not actually as polished as it gets. So mm -hmm. tomorrow what we're gonna do is set up this VH800 FL back here, put some glass bead in it, and show you guys how polished a part can actually become. So that's the goal is to do a comparison between the two, that way you can kind of understand for your process. I think that's it for today. I think that is. So check out part two, where we're gonna polish this up. If you have any more questions about vapor honing or about our machines, you know, call us at 828-202-5563. Uh, we also have a website, www.vaporhuntingtechnologies.com. You can check out, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of our social media. So, also, real quick before you go, remember if you guys want to send in your parts to be blasted, check the link below. Send it in; it's completely free. We'll test it in multiple different abrasives. It doesn't matter if you're a hobbyist or if you're someone in the industry or for your job looking to try and find a solution. Send in as many parts as you want. We'll blast it for you guys and get it back to you. Hope you all have a great day.